What's up guys, Mason the Brock Henderson here, and this is a late night review of Agent Carter, Season 2, Episode 3. Um, and it's been a while. Uh, it's now Thursday, going into Friday, and yeah, I haven't been able to watch it until today and late at night, so now that's what I'm doing the review, so fun stuff. Um, really really interesting episode mainly because one we're getting a lot a lot of information thrown at us uh, this this time this episode and it really makes me question where this season is really going um, because from the first two it kind of you know I, I thought I had an idea of what they were gonna do um, the whole, the whole Dr. Wilkes thing being still alive, I kind of suspected that, um, but it was done interestingly in that he's still alive, but now it seems like the majority of the season, that's going to be a main storyline, is trying to bring him back to the world of reality, because he's on a different plane of existence. Um, that's a really interesting turn to take. And I like it. Uh, I like the fact that he's not just, oh, he's still alive. No, he's not really all the way alive. <laughs> he's still got a complication. Um, so I like that. Uh, th the whole Whitney Frost thing is just, it is wonderful. Um, it, ha it has me cracking up whenever she is, like, totally playing uh, her husband. Like, you can just tell she just... She's talking to him, and he's not willing to do what she's saying, and so she just turns on the tears, and I'm just like, that's that's hysterical. Um, and then the whole thing at the end really freaks me out, the fact that she just, like, grabs him, and then absorbs him, and then all of a sudden that little crack just gets bigger, and I'm like, what the heck's going on there? <laughs> like, um, I, I don't know what they're doing with that, I don't know what's going to happen with her. It seems like she's becoming more and more, um, like, not unhuman. Like, I can't even describe it, but somehow she, like, bonded with the, the zero crap or zero energy stuff. So, very curious to see how that, that plays out. Uh, but I really do, I like the fact that they've kind of got a few different storylines progressing. I mean, you've got everything going on with Whitney Frost, you got everything going on with Wilkes, you've got everything going on with um, the the Order, whoever they are, can't remember the name now, but you've got stuff going on with them, and you've got stuff going on with Thompson, and I gotta admit, I, I'm really enjoying the season so far, but every single time Thompson's on the screen, I just want to turn it off, and I know that sounds really bad, because I feel like they're making his character an even bigger jerk this season on purpose. But it's to the point where it's like, we went through most of this last season, and even then, it wasn't as bad as it is now. And, I don't know. It's just like, why? Why would you want to do that storyline again? You've already done that, and it was frustrating enough, like, a story frustrating, uh, not not like a um, like you you see an overused cliche. That's a different type of frustrating. This was something that was a part of the story, and every time it was on, you're just like, I hate that character. You know, he's an idiot. They did that the first season. You know, he didn't treat Peggy with any respect. Neither did the chief, but she, he was kind of he was more ignorant than he was stupid. Whereas Thompson was just stupid. Um, didn't treat her with any respect at all. And part of that is product of the times. You know, back then women were not well respected. I get that. But he was just, it felt like he had a personal vendetta against her. And then near the end, it kind of felt like he started to respect her a bit more. And started to understand that maybe she does know what she's talking about. And then from the very beginning of this season, it's almost like, instead of, yeah, you know, she knows what she's talking about. It's turned into he's jealous because she's a woman doing 
his job better than he does. Um, and that, I don't know, that just kind of frustrates me, the fact that we had character growth from him in the last season that has now kind of been replaced with another character growth that's probably going to happen this season. Um, so even though it's not the exact same story, it's still a very similar story. Although, I feel like he's probably going to die this season. I don't know why. Um, but just something about the way he's acting in this episode especially. You know, helping the bad guys, uh, doing stuff that clearly is wrong. Like, even if this guy isn't obviously a bad guy, which he is. Like, you can just tell by his demeanor. Um, but even if he wasn't, like, the stuff he's doing is not right. And so it just kind of reinforces the point that he's going to... He's been doing all this stuff to help them. So at the end of the season, he's going to have to sacrifice himself to save the day. And then, you know, Peggy just called him out this episode about the, you know, you're always doing stuff just to get a medal. And he's going to do something at the end and Peggy's going to, like, you know, he's going to die. And Peggy's going to be like, now you really do deserve a medal or something like that. Um, which, if they do do that, hopefully it's creative. Because the way I'm saying it, it sounds like a cliche, which it is. Uh, but the thing about cliches is, if they're done well, you kind of don't notice. You kind of just say, oh, I really enjoyed that, but it's a cliche. I don't care. It was good, okay? Um, but, so yeah, I, that's where I think that storyline's going. We'll see if that happens or not. But I, I think the one thing that's really standing out to me uh, this season even better than last season, is that it's in the past. I don't know why I didn't get him as much of it in the first season as I am this, maybe because it's in L.A., and, like, you see all the, the press people, and they've got, like, the old-time uh, cameras and stuff, and it's kind of like the birth of the press, whereas in this day and age, like, Peggy's walking into the building, you would see, like, a whole crowd of reporters like, just out out front, video cameras, microphones, the whole nine yards. You know, you have vans, like ten vans each. Um, whereas in this, it's like maybe ten reporters outside of the house. Or probably not even ten. It, it looks really small. I'm just like, this is so cool. Like, it just feels so much more authentic. Um, and the first season did feel authentic back in time, too. But I just... When I'm watching this season so far, I just, I can feel it. I feel like I'm back in time. Um, and it's more obvious than in the first season where I'm just like, you know, they say something that reminds me. I'm like, oh yeah, this is set in the past. Um, this one, it really feels like it. It feels like they captured, like, old time Hollywood. Uh, it's really, really fun and uh, really enjoyable to sit through and just kind of, experience what it was like back then. I feel like they've done a very good job of doing that. And then all of a sudden, like, something happens where, like, you know, the, the whole zero, uh, zero energy stuff and, you know, like, the guy gets absorbed into her or, you know, start, brings the guy into form or whatever. You're like, oh, yeah, this is Marvel, so that stuff's going to happen. <laughs> because it doesn't feel like that stuff should be happening. It feels out of place. Um... But, you know, it's it's Marvel, there's going to be some superhuman stuff, I get that, but I just, I wish there was less of it, because without it, it would feel like I was watching an old-time movie, um, and, I, you know, I'd feel like I'm, I was in those times, but with all that stuff, you know, making it look super, like, I, I don't know, it's just, all the CGI makes me realize that it's not back in that time, um, so... It's a weird complaint to have because it's part of the show, because it's Marvel, but that, that's, that's the, you know, besides Thompson pissing me off, that is the one thing that's kind of distracting from the rest of it, is that, you know, you have those moments, you're just like, this is awesome, and then those Marvel stuff happens, and you're just like, yeah, now I don't feel like I'm in the past anymore, but anyway, moving on. Um... I think that's about it. Uh, there were some other really interesting points with, you know, seeing how much control Whitney Frost really has and 
how smart she really is. Like I talked about that one moment where you know her husband won't listen to her, so she turns on the tears. I mean that ends up getting her husband to like send a hitman after Peggy, and I'm just like, wow, she really does have a lot of control over him, and he doesn't even realize it either. Um, and then of course at the end they have that moment with uh, with Jack where. You know, Peggy was telling him about the newspapers, and then reads the newspaper, and it says, you know, whatever ankled or whatever it means to step down. Um, and so I feel like now it's kind of going to be a moment for his character to start wondering maybe something's up. Um, but if this if this story is going to do what I think it's going to do, it's going to be like he's suspicious now because of that. Um, so he's probably going to stick around in L.A. instead of heading back to New York and kind of, you know, follow the case, see where it goes. And then as they find more clues, kind of like what happened with uh, the chief in the first season, you know, like when he first saw something that, you know, Peggy had talked about or something like that, he kind of started suspecting, well, maybe. And then as more information came in, he started to believe more and more. I feel like that's how Thompson's going to kind of work this season um but yeah you know it, even if it does do that cliche route with that story there's still so many other storylines going on that are very interesting right now and very intriguing and don't feel like unoriginal um even if maybe they are unoriginal they don't feel that way so that's nice uh, but you know i'm excited to see where this season goes and hopefully we find out even more in the next episode so what did you think of this episode? Let me know down in the comments below. Do you agree or disagree with me? It doesn't matter. I'm always right. Um, but leave a like and subscribe for more Agent Carter material. And hopefully I can actually watch next week's episode on time and review it on time. We'll see. I'm a busy man. I'll see you at the next review. Peace out.